What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update to today, 2021, as well as the next two upcoming packages, the physical infrastructure package known as the American Jobs Plan and the next stimulus package known as the American Families Plan, as well as what is going on in the world today. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates and don't forget to hit the like button for us. It really helps out our channel. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says the White House and Republican infrastructure negotiation talks, quote, seem to be running into a brick wall. This is as the Democrats and the Republicans are trying to pass the infrastructure package, which is the first half of the uh, larger package, the infrastructure package and the next stimulus package, as part of a bipartisan deal so that they can pass it quickly and without using a reconciliation card. The two packages could be combined and passed with one reconciliation card, or there's actually multiple different options that we've kind of gone over in last um last several videos. Um, the, remember, in about three and a half months, the Democrats get a whole nother set of reconciliation cards, and there's multiple different ways they can pass more than one package with the reconciliation process. But it is probably in the best interest of both Democrats and Republicans to pass this next infrastructure bill with a bipartisan deal, meaning both Republicans and Democrats agree on it. Well, apparently President Biden is going to be ending infrastructure negotiation talks with the key Republican negotiator, Mrs. Uh, Shelley Capito, a Republican senator. Instead, President Biden will be leaning on a um, bipartisan group of lawmakers, both Democrats and Republicans, that are currently already negotiating between each other uh, for bipartisan support, meaning both Democrat and Republican support for this next infrastructure package. Mrs. Campito, who is the Republican negotiator, says, quote, I spoke with the president this afternoon and he ended our infrastructure negotiations. Quote, throughout our negotiations, we engaged respectfully, fully and very candidly, delivering several serious counter offers that each represented the largest infrastructure investment Republicans have put forth. Republican Senator Bill Cassidy tweeted that President Biden called him on Tuesday and, quote, brought up about flood resiliency and energy provisions that would boost his state to try to get more Republican support. Quote, strongly support Mrs. Capito's effort. Any infrastructure package should and must be bipartisan. However, many Democrats disagree and says that they should go ahead and pass it with reconciliation and combine it with the next stimulus package. Here is Senator Bernie Sanders, who is largely uh, by considered by a lot of people the leader of the Democratic movement when it comes to more stimulus and the infrastructure uh, negotiations outside of President Biden. That what the scientists are telling us, if we do not act extremely boldly within the next few years, there is no debate about it. The planet we will be leaving to our children and grandchildren will be increasingly uninhabitable and unhealthy. Yet if we act boldly, we can create millions of jobs, transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel, making our homes and buildings energy efficient, moving to the electrification of transportation in America. We have got to do that. But it's not only when we talk about infrastructure, climate, or even roads and bridges as important as that is. We have got to understand that for the last 45, 50 years, the working class of this country has been decimated. We are the only major country not to guarantee health care to all people. We pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Half of our people living paycheck to paycheck. Half a million people sleeping out on the street. On and on it goes. This is the moment to create millions of good paying jobs, rebuilding both our physical infrastructure, dealing with climate, and dealing with the needs of working families and our children and the elderly. This is what I do think, Chris. We've, these negotiations cannot go on and on and on. In my own view, do I believe that we will have 10 Republican votes to do something significant for physical infrastructure, for climate, for human infrastructure, for healthcare, for education? No, I don't. So I do want to tell you, maybe it'll make you feel a little bit better, that as we speak, we are working hard on a major, major reconciliation bill, which would combine both Biden's physical infrastructure plans, as well as family plan, the human infrastructure as well. We're working on it right now. Right. 
Wow, major news from Senator Bernie Sanders there. Remember, Senator Bernie Sanders is the Senate budget chairman. He's the person in charge of the reconciliation process to pass um, bills without Republican support. That is exactly how they passed the third stimulus check package. Um, it was passed by only Democrats. Um, all the Democrats in the Senate, including Senator Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, along with 99.9% .9 of the Democrats in the House, I believe there was one Democrat in the House that voted no, um, they passed the third stimulus check package bill without um, any Republican support. So Senator Bernie Sanders says, Behind the scenes, in the background, they are currently right now working on a uh, combination of the two bills for reconciliation process. Wow. Absolutely uh, gr crazy news here. Um, yeah. So negotiations have fallen apart with the Republicans. President Biden has stepped back out of the negotiation process. He's basically uh, walked out of the room and said, uh, no deal for now. He says, we'll let this bipartisan group of lawmakers work on the um, negotiations. But Senator Bernie Sanders comes in and he's largely considered um, the leader of the Democrats for the stimulus movement, as well as considered President Biden's right hand man. I mean, besides Vice President Kamala Harris, um, Bernie Sanders is is literally next there. Um, and they're actually very good friends in, in, in person in real life, too. Senator Bernie Sanders says behind the scenes, they are right now working on passing both of these bills with reconciliation. Now, I know there's going to be some people that are going to be worried about Senator Joe Manchin. Um, the same thing happened with the last bill. Senator Joe Manchin said he didn't want to pass it with reconciliation. He wanted to um, negotiate with the Republicans. But the same thing happened. We've seen the, the negotiations kind of fall apart. They kind of took too long. And in the end, Senator Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema voted along with the Democrats. Now, Senator Joe Manchin did what I call a little bit of grandstanding. He kind of stood up and said, well, I don't know about this. I'm not too sure. You know, my Republican friends over here, even though I'm a Democrat, uh, I got all these Republican friends over here and, you know, they're not too happy but at the end of the day, uh, he voted with the Democrats. In fact, he does 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, in fact, almost all Democrats and Republicans vote along party lines. Even uh, rhinos, Republicans in name over, only like like Mitt Romney and uh, dinos, Democrats in name only, like Senator Joe Manchin, they still, like 99% like of the time, end up voting with their party, either Democratic or Republican. Very rarely do you see them vote um, a against party lines. And when they do, like I said, it's about 1% of the time. So um, it'll be very interesting to see here. It's like this deadline is closing. Uh, President Biden has now walked out of the negotiations. And he said, all right, I'm going to give us to this bipartisan group and they can negotiate. But Senator Bernie Sanders says, uh, yeah, well, we're going to start working on combining the two bills and passing them through reconciliation instead of negotiating with the Republicans. So yeah, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Do you think the Democrats should go and try to pass this bill without Republicans? Do you think when they do that, they'll be able to get it passed? They'll, again, they'll need 100% of the Democrats in the Senate and 99% of the Democrats in the House to all vote yes on this bill. Uh, exactly the same situation as the third stimulus check package. History will have to repeat itself to be able to pass it this way. Um, I have long, long thought that they were going to pass these bills through reconciliation anyways. Um, the, the odds did kind of grow here or for the infrastructure negotiations over the past week or so. Uh, I did think it was a 75% chance that they would pass it through um, a bipartisan bill. Now I think it's probably down to about 50%. Remember, the, the odds, may the odds be ever in your favor, right? Let me know if you know what movie that's from. Uh, yeah, that was a pretty poor uh, chime there. But if you know what movie that's from, uh, you're a good movie buff. Uh, but I think maybe there's a 50-50 chance now that they'll pass it either through reconciliation or bipartisan for the infrastructure package. I think the next stimulus package, again, still a 99% chance they're going to pass that through reconciliation. They have multiple different ways to pass these. They could combine them as one, pass them through reconciliation. Um, they can go around the Senate parliamentarian and pass reconciliation against her uh, advisory. And um, all they really do is need the Democrats to vote together. As long as the Democrats can vote together, uh, they can still do that. And in about three and a half months, 
they get the, the new fiscal year starts, they get a whole nother round of a whole nother package full of reconciliation cards, which most people believe is three more for um, in about three and a half months when the new fiscal year starts. So um, remember, Democrats are already talking about another package after this. OK, and um, that's because the economy is is going to take years to recover. I mean, let, let's be honest here. Um in 2008, 2009, it took over four years. Senator Chuck Schumer says it took five years for the economy to recover. Um, that was without a virus. There was no virus at all. Now we're dealing with a virus and an economic recovery. And there's just no way that the economy is going to recover in the next two months. In fact, the last two economic reports uh, says, literally from President Biden himself, that it makes it clear the need for more stimulus. In fact, the White House just came out and said that President Biden could be okay with another stimulus check in the next package. The president and both uh, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki have really said nothing negative and have not said no about another stimulus check at all. In fact, all the different articles that I have to show you from the president say that he is in favor of another stimulus check. The White House says that a forced stimulus check is up to Congress, basically giving the okay for another forced stimulus check or the multiple monthly recurring stimulus checks that both Senator Bernie Sanders and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, as well as over half of the Democrats in the Senate are pushing for not just a single stimulus check, but for monthly recurring stimulus checks as well. And there's also over 80 different Democrats in the House of Representatives that are in favor of monthly stimulus checks to be included in this next stimulus package. This is separate from the child tax credits. This is in addition to that. The child tax credit are those monthly stimulus checks that are going to be starting uh, on July 15th of $250 to $300 per month. There's two different bills, one for $1,000 monthly stimulus checks that would go until after a one year after the pandemic is declared over, or the one that Senator Chuck Schumer and Bernie Sanders are in favor of, which is $2,000 monthly stimulus checks, but it would only go until the pandemic is declared over. Democrats are also still trying to find ways to increase the minimum wage as it hasn't been raised since 2009, but obviously our living costs have soared. Uh, Democratic Representative Ilhan Omar and tweeted back by Rashida Tlaib say, a reminder that the federal minimum wage has actually decreased in value over the past several decades. We're paying people less in purchasing power than we did in 1970, as you can see here on this graph, when we paid uh, back, back in 1970, the minimum wage looks like it was around two, uh, less than $2 an hour. I remember my first job, I made $4.25 per hour working at an amusement park named Jaga Lake when I was 14, 15, and 16 years old. Let me know how, how much the minimum wage was when you had your first job. I'm sure there will be some interesting answers down in the comments. But yeah, $4.25 was what it was when I started. And let me see here. I just turned 40 years old. So that was back when I was 14 years old. So back in like 1995 or so. Now, the problem with the rise in wages is that if companies have to start paying 50% more for minimum wage, such as fast food restaurants, uh, they're going to have to raise the prices of their goods. It's just simple economics. So you'll have to pay more for food, McDonald's, Chipotle, Wendy's, and even things at Walmart or even Amazon. Chipotle has just said that they are going to have to raise prices to cover the cost of raising wages. Former McDonald's CEO warns that a $15 minimum wage directly contributes to fast food industries push for automation to eliminate jobs so that they don't have to pay $15 an hour minimum wage in the fast food industry. We're also seeing this at Walmarts across the country, grocery stores across the country. Self-checkouts are becoming more and more common as they move to somewhat eliminate um, some jobs or as many jobs as they can because they basically buy the software and they pay for it one time or um, and they don't have to pay $15 an hour every single hour for a worker uh, for the rest of, you know, year and year and year and year to come. So there's kind of a double edged sword, you know, where people making minimum wage don't have enough money to buy food. But if that's not you, if you're not in the minimum wage category, 
then it's somewhat bad for you because you're going to pay more in cost of goods, more for food, more for goods. And they're also eliminating jobs because um, of automation and computer automation to get rid of jobs. Now, on the other hand, some co companies like California Jersey Mike's are offering up to 10 thousand dollar hiring bonuses and generous unemployment benefits saying we're going to have to run a very efficient business to make this work as multiple different com uh, companies like walmart jersey mics and amazon are offering 500 all the way up to ten thousand dollar signing bonuses because they can't get people to go to work for minimum wage so um, a lot of companies are struggling to get people to go to work because even if you make $10 an hour and you go work 40 hours a week, that's $400 uh, a week minus taxes, you're probably coming home with like $300 a week. And if your rent is, say, $1,000, uh, it takes over three out of the four weeks just to pay your rent, not even including other things like, you know, electric, utilities, car payment, you know, money for children, uh, food, all those other things. So, that's kind of the battle going on right now is that the Democrats want to raise minimum wages. Corporations are struggling to hire people at minimum wage, and yet that's going to raise the cost of food and goods and services and everything, really. Anything that pertains to anywhere close to minimum wage is probably going to raise the cost. And then you have other people like, say, EMTs that make, let's say they make $15 an hour right now, and uh, they literally have people's lives in their hands on a daily basis, and they went to school for training, and uh, they might make $15 an hour right now, but yet a person working at McDonald's flipping hamburgers is now going to be making $15 an hour as well if they're able to do that. Some states have already raised the minimum wage to $15 an hour. So if you're in a skilled position like an EMT and you're dealing with people's lives, is it really fair for you to make $15 an hour and for them to make $15 an hour as well? And it almost kind of sounds like, okay, well, now EMTs are going to have to get a raise to $17 or $20 an hour as it's a much more skilled position now uh, dealing with people's lives. And you think about other jobs that might be uh, similar to that. And everything is going to have to go up in prices because if you're a more skilled worker with uh, skills or degrees or um, certain skills in any industry, it would only make sense that you would be paid more than a minimum wage worker at uh, at McDonald's. I mean, it's just kind of supply and demand, right? So um, you could really see the cost of everything going up as wages have to go up everywhere across the country. And if you're not making minimum wage, then this is kind of bad for you because you're not going to get a pay raise but everybody else is, but yet the cost of goods and services are going to go up and that's going to basically cause inflation. Um, so yeah, it's a very interesting situation and what we're going through right now coming out of this economic recession and this economic depression. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'll keep you up to date on everything. I'm going to be having a big social security video coming out here in the next couple videos or so as I'm kind of gathering information for you guys on the social security raise and the social security decrease that some people are getting information on as well as uh, everything stimulus related. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates. Remember, new videos come out every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So don't miss out on any of our videos. You can click this video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video teaches you how to start your own business selling products on Amazon FBA. I've had dozens of students that have replaced their nine to five job by selling products on Amazon FBA, and I teach them how to do that. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks guys, and I will see you in the next video.